Hi, this is Jamal Flaherty, the founder and CEO of QA Locate. Over the next couple of minutes, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to the fantastic invention called the GeoHash. Invented in 2008 by Gustavo Neumeyer, he placed it in the public domain for free use. So, what exactly is a GeoHash and what makes it unique and highly valuable? Let's start by visually exploring what a GeoHash looks like. Here we're looking at the surface of the planet, so we're going to zoom down here to a particular place in the Dallas-Fort Worth area into a place called Las Colinas. And we're going to focus on this Starbucks. What we're going to do is we're going to click right here. And what you can see here is that we have a rectangle. And this rectangle has a set of characters. You'll notice the characters 9VG51EGD4. You'll notice this rectangle is sitting inside a larger rectangle. This one's square-like inside this larger rectangle. And you'll notice that this string is the same as this string minus one character. It's lost the, let, the number four. If we back off, you'll notice that this rectangle sits inside another rectangle, 9VG51EG. And if you'll notice, in this case, that this string for this rectangle is one shorter. And so its parent rectangle is one shorter. And its parent rectangle is one shorter. And so what you're seeing here is reverse telescoping. There's a process of showing you how a, a geohash works. And this is a geohash. Geohash is any sequence of um, characters to actually identify a particular region. So the geohash 9, that's a valid geohash, consists of these four corners. And so when you ask, where is geohash 9, it will tell you these four corners. Or if you ask it, well, where, where, where are you exactly, it will hand you its center point, which is approximately here. And so if we zoom out slightly, you can see that the Earth has been subdivided into these geohashes. It turns out it is a little bit of artifacting here. Um, it is eight wide and four tall, making 32 values. So it uses the number 0 through 9, and then A through Z, which are 26 characters, minus the letter A, and then minus the letters I and L. And otherwise, it fills in completely. Okay, a little artifacting again. Let's do that. Okay. And so now you can see um, we could fill it the remaining way. All right. So that, that gives you the, the sense of the overall geohash. So now if we dive back down into, you can see this number 9 geohash is now divided by um, its foreign width and 8 tall. Again, give us 32 values. Now this time, it is, instead of 8 wide, it's 4 wide and 8 tall, and it's roughly square. If you'll notice, it's a square. You'll notice we go to, uh, to 9V, and 9V is a rectangle, and we're back to it's 8 wide. And 4 tall. So, now we're, and you'll notice there it's three characters long and it looks like a square again. And once we dive in and we look at a subregion, it looks like a rectangle again. It turns out that at odd character boundaries, so at 9 and then at 9VG, um, you'll notice those are squares. And it will occur again now when we get down to 9V51. Look, we've got another square. And so, so 9GV1 defines this area, and that's its center point right there. So now we can continue. We're back to a rectangle, now to another square. And so we have this square here. And this square um, is an um, uh, um, odd number of characters long, seven characters long. So we can keep going in. There's eight characters. And now here's nine characters. And that nine characters represents roughly a... Um, 4.7 meter square, or it's a uh, 15, a uh, little, a uh, little under 16 feet square. So if you notice, there's a little teeny tiny square right there, on the right side of that rectangle, and that square actually measures six by six inches large, or um, roughly, uh, forgot how many centimeters, but some number of centimeters, equivalent number of centimeters, and so that actually adds two more characters. So it's all these characters plus two additional characters. We can't see it and and I'm not able to zoom in any further. So the, the critical 
concept for you to grok though is this idea of telescoping. Reverse telescoping here and so we reversed all the way out here and then we can telescope all the way back down again. And so um, and that gives us that whole idea of each time we add a character we get a smaller rectangle more accurate rectangle. And the rectangle's center is always the one point it's represented by but it's a geohash is always defined by its corners, by its four, the four corners that surround it. And so that little tiny square there, six inches square, is um, a valid geohash. And it has two more, two more uh, characters attached to it. Obviously, this rectangle is a, um, a valid geohash. We can't quite read the text, and it just adds one character. And so a question you might have is, how far can a geohash go down? And technically, it, um, it goes, you can get down to, you can add 19 characters and you're at the, you're at nanometers, but I'm not sure it's very useful, a very useful value at that level. It's more useful at this higher level. Second thing is that six by six inch square, for most people, the center of that would be good enough to call a point. And so instead of using a pair of long lats, you can use a geohash to represent, um, and say that one right there, 11 digit, 11 character geohash, and that will give you sufficient precision. And now you have a string as a column value in your database instead of two approximated floating points for your longitude latitude, which um, are very difficult to query against. Strings are trivial to query against because databases are optimized for them. Um, floating point values, which longitude and latitude are, are not. And so you're now seeing the the, the values of the geohash itself. That's it for the geohash. I hope you enjoyed the exploration. Um, thank you very much and have a nice day.